On air in 10 seconds. Did you have a little on-stall smarter at home? Got some blackmail you'd like to unload? Are you perhaps the victim of some all of your extortions. Well, I got the girl that you should be. She might not be the best private eye in the world, and so what if it does cost you four or five hundred dollars? She sure is sweet. She is Candy Matson. Like to meet her? You come to 8209. Candy Matson? Well, I wasn't sure when I looked in the mirror this morning. Had a rough night, eh? Oh, there have been rougher ones. Look, voice, before you get caught with my receiver down, who are you and what do you want? As to who I am, you'll find out very shortly. What I want is you. How romantic. And over the phone yet. Let me finish. What I want you is to lay off that cable car business. Oh, that. Well, I'm afraid I can't. You see, I was sitting beside the man when they discovered his transfer had been punched. Sort of, uh, permanently. That's how things happen with me. I get into the craziest routines. You see, I used to be a model. <laughs> I'd been told I had the proper displacement for such a career. <laughs> but I found there wasn't enough money in it. And a girl has to eat, doesn't she? And she has to maintain a nice apartment on Telegraph Hill. And buy enough clothes to highlight the displacement I mentioned. Right? <laughs> sure. So I turned private eye. You meet a better class of people, mostly named Rigor or Mortis. <laughs> Take this cable car deal, for instance. Like to hear how the whole thing happened? Well, let's get started then. I wanted to get downtown that morning, but I couldn't take the F car on Stockton. They were ripping up about 87 blocks, which is par for the course. So I walked down Telegraph Hill and up to Mason. That's where the Bay and Powell cable car stops. All aboard! Come on, people, come on. We gotta make the firm on white feet in time. The car was loaded, and so was the character next to me. I tried to budge into the seat between him and a fisherman's warp dowager. But I couldn't quite make it. I'd forgotten my shoehorn. Say, <laughs> <sighs> <clears throat> so, yeah, pardon me, but would you mind reading your Wall Street Journal over that away a bit? I'd like to sit in here. Oh, if you insist. <laughs> a night of old. <clears throat> he bunched his hips about a quarter of an inch and I slipped it, ready for my rocket ride over the hill and down into town. The trip, as usual, was uneventful. Three smashed fenders and several choice words I'd never heard before. But I wrote them down. <laughs> By the time our prairie schooner reached the turntable at Market Street, the crowd on the car had thinned out. But a uh, buster was still beside me, his head buried in common and preferred. Marketplace! I started to get down. Hey, lady, take your boyfriend with you, will ya? We're going back up the hill. 
friend? Ha! I don't think so. Huh. Will you look at that? He fell asleep over his stocks and bonds. I looked again. Tipsy wasn't asleep. Tipsy was stone cold dead on marketplace. What a twist. I, who always went on the prowl for a who done it, literally get one tossed into my lap. You see, he hadn't just gone out of this world serene like. Oh, no. There was a steady slurp, slurp of blood down his vest just north by northeast of the uh, <clears throat> equator. <laughs> After a half an hour wait full of questioning by homicide legmen, I knew my morning shopping tour was rained out. And after all, I was only going to buy an emerald clip to match the glint in my eye. Well, that would have to wait. I knew the next step. I grabbed a cab home, and I wasn't long in wait. Right on cue. And if it was the right cue, it would be Lieutenant. Ray Mallard from headquarters, daintily pressing his cuticles against my apartment buzzer. I was right. Right? About what? <laughs> I've, uh, I've been expecting you, Mallard. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Sit down. Take off your hat. It is off. <laughs> Have a drink? No, no. I'm not in the mood. Just make it a double, will you? Candy, for once, I'm puzzled. You're just saying that. Yeah, because it's true. I've checked and rechecked, and no matter how many loose ends I tie together, I still get no connection between you and Dwight Ellsworth. Dwight Hoosworth? Ellsworth, your extremely limp traveling companion on the cable car this morning. Mallard, I can give you an angle on that. Yeah? Yeah! The angle being I didn't know him from Euclid. <sighs> Level? Straight! Ah, oh, look, honeypot. This mediocre dialogue is Getting us nowhere. <laughs> now, why did you haul those size 11s in here for? Frankly, I don't know. Oh, here, fill it up, will you? Huh. Well, you're not just going around in cycles, Mallard. You're going around in doubles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said before, Candy, you got a pretty view from here. Oh? oh? Wait till I turn around. I mean, from your window. Look at that steamer down there. Just talking. Huh? Where? Just down there. Probably arriving from the Far East. Huh. That's romance for you. Here's your drink. Oh, thanks. You know, it is. What a romantic. Don't you think it would be fun to jump on a tramp like that and whisk off to the South Sea? Mm -hmm. On a honeymoon? No, no, no. Well, that's what I thought. South Sea! Mallard! Don't call me Mallard. Well, why not? We are just playing for ducks, aren't we? Ah, very crisp. Playing for ducks. No, Candy, you aren't. Not in this case. We got a dead man on our hands, ready to toot, toot shot right through the heart, and you were sitting right next to him. Sure. Sure. Go on. Get out of here. What? You heard me. Lift your hindquarters and get back to.
the headquarters. Candy, I don't like that look. You got something on your mind? Yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't recognize it if I told you about it. One word of warning. Don't dabble. You're in deep enough. Got it? Got it. Here's your hat. Grab it. So long, Mallet. See you around the jailhouse sometime. Twas then I smelled a big fat fee. That great big kind of attractive mallard missed the boat. Oh, he saw it, but he missed it. It was that steamer he saw docking. That was the first time I came out of the dark since my giant dipper of a ride down the hill that morning. I needed help. So, I called an old friend of mine. If you can call that help. His name was Rembrandt Watson. He was a photographer. And other things. He spent most of his life in the dark room dabbling with bottles. His negative and prints were sharp. His thought process is not quite, but he'd given me assistance in the past, so I called him. Rembrandt Watson speaking, photography, portraits, and camera work. Yes, Rembrandt, I know. Also available for gardening, janitorial services, and babysitting. Rembrandt, it's Candy. Especially if they're over 21. Oh. Who? Candy? Now you're tuned in. How dare you bother me? I was experimenting with a new type of formula. Ninety proof for a hundred. A hundred? A hundred. And candy, it works beautifully. <laughs> There's a delightful little pixie in a pink belly skirt in my living room. Well, leave her there and get over here immediately to my place. Take a cab. I'll pay for it. I would much rather have a handsome carriage full of chestnuts. <laughs> you got them in your head. Now just do as I say and get over here. Load in, Rembrandt. Gladly. Where's the man to take my cloak, gloves, and topper? <laughs> You're wearing a sport coat and slack. And you know I have no man. And therein lies your basic trouble, my dear. You have no man. No, Rembrandt. Every man should have a woman, and every woman should have a man. It is the uncontrovertible law of the universe. Candy, you should have a man. <laughs> you? Uh, sure, I'm no longer a man. I'm a sprout transcending the world. <laughs> well, stop transcending a moment and come down to ice. We've got a job to do. How poetic. How idyllic. We've got a job to do. Wait, for money? Eventually. Oh, one of those. Very well, my dear. Bring me up to date. Well, I don't really know if I can or not. Good. Then I'll leave and return to my formula. No, no. No, what I mean is the whole story is so fantastic. You'd never believe it. I might. Try me, Candy. Well, I get on the cable car and sit next to a character reading the Wall Street Journal. A strange coupling. A cable car and the Wall Street Journal? Yeah! And... We get to the end of the line and my friend next to me is dead. Probably the ride down the hill frightened him to death. Nah, uh He looked like a used punch board. Neat little bullet hole right through his heart. Candy, my little ballerina friend in the pink skirt is more believable than what you just told me. 
I told you it was fantastic, but none of how it happened. Now, sooner or later, Mallet is going to come out of his fog, and when he does, I'm going to be out of a fee. A fee so far that doesn't exist. My pretty. It will, if my hunch is right. Now here's what I want you to do. Go down to the Chronicle and get all the back files you can on Southern Island Steamboat Company. The Chronicle of Pleasure. I have a few companions who indulge there in formula. Well, stay away from those companions and just do as I ask. Very well, my dove. I'll go. But until it gets my wheel. Now, where will you be? Down on the dock, Rembrandt. I've got to do some leg work. <laughs> Let me assure you, Candy, you have just the right equipment for it, too. What a joy! Ooh, I bet they mount slit fish gullets on the walls instead of deer heads. Mm. Ah. Well, come on, Candy. Get your tools out and uh, <clears throat> screw up your courage. Yeah, miss. What help me? Nothing. Right at the moment. Except information. Well, information and water are both free. What are you wanting now? I'm looking for the purser of the Dwight Stoneys. I hear he does his shore duty in here. That's right. Name's Campbell. I had a nice time over there, but lost him. Thanks. Hello, Sailor. <clears throat> hey, Campbell, wake up. Uh, uh, leave me alone. Come on. Snap out of it. Who are you? My name is Candy Matson, and I want to ask you a question. Uh, I'm only drinking. Go away. Not until I find out what I want to know. Dwight Ellsworth was murdered this morning. What? I thought that would bring you to... That's the nicest news I heard since BJ Day. What do you want to know? Where does his brother live? <laughs> That's dude. He's got about as much spine as a water eel. Never you mind. I want to find him. He seems to keep his whereabouts as secret as an atomic stockpile. <laughs> he lives out in Seacliff, 25 dash year Road. Ask me, the whole family ought to be knocked off. Bartender, buy my friend a little reward and uh, one for yourself, too. Well, so far so good. Oh, how did I know about Campbell the person? Well, I have quite a few friends in town. Most of a type my mallard doesn't approve. <laughs> so after leaving that little watering hole, I grabbed a cab and navigated the driver out towards Seacliff. It was so foggy I couldn't see the meter, but I paid him anyway and dismissed him. There it was. Twenty-five. Dash room, uh, an austere-looking van, uh, one that dared you to ring the doorbell. 
<laughs> I did. I had the awful feeling I should have been around at the side door delivering hand laundry. Good evening. <laughs> Except for the fog, yes. <laughs> Is uh Mr. Ellsworth in? Yes, my husband is here, but I'm afraid this is not a good time. There has been a death in the family. I know. That's why I'm here. Come in. Thank you. Walk this way, please. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't, even if I lived to be a hundred. <laughs> Mind your tongue, young lady. You're in the house of an Ellsworth. <laughs> oh, hoity toy. The old babe had delusions of grandeur. Well, no need to get uppity with me. I've mingled with royalty. <laughs> By once, I had three kings in the palm of my hand at the Silver Dollar. <laughs> but this old gal was really something. She couldn't have been more than 45, yet she looked like something out of the Baroness of Wimpole Street. She ushered me into a high ceiling living room. And there on the divan was my boy. His head lowered into his hands and quite obviously touched. <laughs> quite obviously. Roger, this young lady is here to see you. I don't believe you mentioned your name. Candy Matson. That's it. You in shipping too? Um, have a thought. Just pardon me if I don't seem hospital, Miss Matson. But my brother was murdered. I know. I was sitting next to him when it happened. You were? Yes. Mr. Ellsworth, I don't want to take up much of your time. So I'll come right to the point. You see, I'm a private detective. Oh, one of those persons. <laughs> Put your nose back. Down, Mrs. Ellsworth. Let me make my proposition. Yes, I am a private detective. And I'm in a spot, too. The police think I'm connected to the case in some way. So I'm here for a double purpose. I'm listening, Miss Matson. Roger, I don't think you should be speaking with this. This woman. So right, Mrs. Ellsworth. Now, I can find out who killed your brother. But it'll take some money. Give me a check now for $300. And I'll find the murderer. And I'll also clear myself. Well, uh, I don't know. Naturally, you want to see the killer of your brother brought to justice. Don't you, Mr. Ellsworth? Roger. Don't you? Yes, yes, of course. Here, I'll make a check out right now. Thanks. Just make it out to Candy Matson. Payable today. Oh! A lovely collection of guns you have, Mr. Ellsworth. You are... Uh, Hunt much? Mm. Oh, yes, yes. The whole family is quite, quite fond of shooting. Ah, there you are. Thank you. I'll be in touch with you sometime tomorrow. The missus didn't say another word. She just stood there against the fireplace and shot sparks through me. <laughs> After I 
waved the check in the air a few times. To dry the ink, <laughs> she showed me to the door. Very clever, aren't you? Taking advantage of a weak-willed man. I wonder who made him that way. Don't cash that check. I mean it. Don't cash that check. Mrs. Ellsworth, three hundred dollars. I need the money badly. I need some uh, <laughs> new rolls for my player piano. <laughs> <clears throat> I buzzed back downtown. I wanted to cash that check in a hurry. I knew of only one person who would give me that crisp green at that hour. Uncle Charlie, the honest miller who ran the chase room. Uncle Charlie, in the strict sense of the word, was the gentleman. <laughs> so, with a Tender little pat on my mm, cheek. He cashed the check and I went up Telegraph Hill and home. All of a sudden, my eyes did a couple of inverted loops. All my lights were off. Ah, Candy, the light of my life. Come join our party. Oh, Rembrandt, you gave me a scare. You don't scare easy either. Candy, got something on your mind? <laughs> and Mahler. <laughs> How ducky. <laughs> a midnight soiree. <laughs> mm. What goes on here? Well, the chicken you had in the icebox is delicious. Was delicious. Looks like you've done everything but eat the bones. And you, sir, and your superb is <clears throat> vintage is superb too, Candy. Have a little formula. No. Now come on. What gives? That's my line, Candy. What gives? You're in on something, and I want to know about it. Oh, Mallard, believe me, it's nothing. I'm just trying to parlay a couple of hunches. Tall hunches? Look at all those clippings on the South Sea Island Steamer Company. What are they for? I meant to tell you, Candy, I have remarkable success down at the Chronicle. There's everything you need want on the steamboat line. Oh, Rembrandt. Did you have to tell the whole world? <laughs> Candy, you charmed me unnecessarily. I nearly had the clippings on the table when Hawkshaw here walked in on me. <sighs> okay, Candy, take it from there. Nothing makes sense yet. Ballard, so there's nothing to tell, really. Really? How about where were you last night? Here! And there. I knew I should have put an extra man on you. Save me some grief. Two men be better, I think. Two days. That's all, Mella. Just give me two days to tie up about poor loose ends. And I think I'll have it all worked out. <sighs> all right. But don't forget, the boys down at Carney Street headquarters don't love you the way I do. Two days, no more or less. I gotta go. Thanks for the foul chicken. <clears throat> Here, Rembrandt. Here's a uh, fifty dollars for you. <coughs> fifty? My word! What's all this talk about recession? Go on, take it. Go someplace and uh, stabilize the economy. <laughs> I whipped through the old newspaper clipping, and it was all there. Fire at sea on Ellsworth boat. 
to Seamen, Lost Dog, Ellsworth Steamer near Honolulu. South Sea Island Steamboat loses rudder and stove. On and on it went for over a period of three years. Ugh. I threw the papers back on the table and helped myself to some of <laughs> Rembrandt's formula. Oh, I turned down the light, went out on the floor. Oh. The bay was dark except for an occasional path of light from a passing crater. And then I sat down to think and think. Then, click, click, just like that. Two little tumblers in my mind fell into place. There was only one thing to do, and that was to do it the hard way. The next morning, just as the ferry building siren was announcing eight o'clock to downtown San Francisco, I got Rembrandt on the phone. Uh, Candy, what on earth are you calling me for at this hour? You can't help it. There's work to be done. I did my work last night so extremely well that I'm just now going to bed. Sorry, you'll have to delay your sack time. Meet me at the corner of Mason and Union in ten minutes, right where the cable car stops. Now what are we going to do? We're going to take a cable car ride. What? On one of those bouncy, junky little contraptions? <laughs> Not with the way I feel this morning. Now Union and Mason in ten minutes. This is the silliest thing you've ever done, Candy. Maybe. We'll see. Huh. But Dwight Ellsworth was already on the call when I got on here. And alive. How could you tell? He mumbled something when I asked him to move over. Sounds logical. Although, I once remembered stumbling into a corpse that mumbled for hours. You see? Rembrandt was in one of his rambling moods. So I let him alone. The car pulled over Mason Street, down Washington, then swung on to Powell and the hill. Now, I watched the buildings and apartments carefully. There was a little red brick building, now a big apartment house, a woman's residence club, and so on. Then, over the hill, more apartments, and the possibilities petered out at Bush. Well... Only one thing to do. Canvas all those blocks between Washington and Bush. <clears throat> okay, Rembrandt. Off the car. Yes, the strangest corpse I ever did see. What'd you say, Candy? Off the car. Come on. Now what? I just want to go to bed. Well, not for a long time, Boy Blue. Now here's the pitch. You take this building, and I'll take the next. And we'll alternate as we go along. As if a tall woman with a horsey face dressed something like Queen Victoria ever lived around here. Oh, Candy. I know. It sounds wild. But it's gotta be done. A horse with a tall face and dressed something like... Rembrandt! Look at me! Get that smoke out of your brain. A tall woman with a horsey face dressed something like Queen Victoria. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Get going. It was slow and tiresome. 
And oh, the answers I got. Tall gal dressed something like Queen Victoria. <sighs> oh, sis. That was about her. Nope. Nobody like that ever lived here. Are you, uh, positive? A damn thing, that description? Yes, I am positive. The morning wore on, and so did we. We were over on the other side of California Street now. So, we stopped and had a bite to eat. I had pickles with mine, and Rembrandt had olives. On toothpicks. <laughs> in a glass. <laughs> and again, we picked up the hunt. <laughs> My heart was suddenly making with the rumble. There, just on the other side of clay, in front of a three-story red brick house, was a police squad car. There was a little knot of people gathered around. And I walked down the block and up the front steps. And I didn't have any trouble finding the room. The door was wide open and there was a body on the floor. Four representatives of the law were buzzing back and forth. One of the buzzies was mad. Well, my little ambassador of violence, why is it you're always around the extremely dead? Candy. I've got no time to brandy the ad libs, Mallard. Who is it? Don't know yet. No identification. Let me see. <gasps> ah, a pen pal, maybe? I was right. I knew it. Knew it? Knew what? You're right. He was a pen pal. He wrote me a check last night for three hundred dollars. And his name is Roger Ellsworth. Very interesting. Hmm. Must be open season on the Ellsworths. Okay, Candy. Time you filled in the blanks. Start. Wait a minute. I want to look at the window here. Mm-hmm. Mallard, there are a couple of younger Ellsworths living around town. I'm sure you'd like to see them stay healthy. Yeah. And get out to 25 Dashell Road and pick up the old crone named Ellsworth. Five will get you 20. She's the one you're after. <sighs> All right. Well, you get back to your place and stay put. I want to have a more illuminating chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like putty in your hands. The moon was coming up over Diablo and spraying a path of silver on the bay. Still, no matter. I wondered what could be wrong. This was it. This was the showdown. <sighs> Have you seen a tall Victorian face with a horsey dressed woman? Oh, Rembrandt. Candy, I'm so mad at you, Hawk. Oh, what's the use? Now what's the matter? What's the matter, she asks. She says, I've been roaming up and down Powell Street ringing doorbells. Where did you go, you traitor? <gasps> Rembrandt! I'm sorry. In all the excitement, I forgot all about you. What excitement? There's been another murder. Oh, in a moment there's going to be another. I'm looking right at you, Candy. Oh, cool. Have some formula and stop snorting steam. What was that? The window! Candy! It just shattered! What? Wait a minute. 
That window didn't just shut up by itself. Quick, get the lights, Rembrandt. Now, duck down here. What sort of silly game are we playing now? This isn't a game, believe me. Candy, Candy, are you all right? Yes, it's the gumshoe. Yes, I'm all right. Where are you, Mallard? Over here, two houses over. We've got your girlfriend trapped on the roof next to you. Don't move and stay covered. Okay. All right, Miss Ellsworth. Are you going to come down peacefully, or do we have to play cops and robbers? I'm not coming down until I get that candy mats in. <sighs> have your own way. Okay, loosen up a bit, boys. Oh, better than the 4th of July. Keep your head down, Rembrandt. Oh, is that what was up? Ready to come down, Miss Ellsworth? No, I'm not. That hateful woman. She ruined all of my plans with her snooping and prying. She's going to die, I tell you. It was a miracle, Candy. The muscle moved slightly just as she shot at you. It was too close. Let me tell you. She's dead? Oh, decidedly. I think she was dead before she hit the ground. What happened? Well, we went out to her house and she was just driving off. We arrived, j we, we trailed her to North Beach, lost her for a block, and then spotted her car on top of this hill here. We arrived just as she was getting on the roof next door. Okay, now tell me your little dream. It was that ship docking that set my wheels going around. The name, Ellsworth, started burning in the back somewhere. You saw the clippings Rembrandt dug up? Yeah. The South Sea Island steamboat line was slowly being sabotaged. I did some checking and found that the insurance companies Warren's going to renew. I don't know why I didn't tell that it's sooner. It's just that you had too many other things on your mind, Mallard, dear. <laughs> I went out to the place on Dashel Road. And when I left, I was pretty sure the old girl had knocked off her brother-in-law. Why? Well, for several reasons. One, she was a venomous old witch. Two, you've never seen such a collection of guns in all your life. And, according to Roger Ellsworth, they both enjoyed using them. Mm. I noticed one little pop gun that was very interesting. Had a silencer on it. Uh, uh, that was when she used on you tonight. And also the one she used on Dwight Ellsworth from the window of the apartment where you filmed her husband. How do you know? Go back there. You'll see a nice little bullet hole in the curtain with burn powder, powder all around it. No, don't tell me. Yes, I am telling you that they rented that place knowing Dwight Ellsworth always went down on a certain cable car. They waited that morning until we were riding by, and then she popped it. I have now heard everything. Not everything. The reason? Dwight Ellsworth, rather than fighting the insurance company, had decided to sell the steamboat line. The old gal thought she'd beat him to the punch by knocking him off. The company would then fall into her husband's hands. But what about her husband? Well, at first, I thought he was just another weak-kneed man with an overbearing wife distraught over his brother's death. But now I'm not so sure. No? No! Not when I think about that phone call. What phone call? Oh, another 
little detail that just slipped my mind until now. Huh. Oh, I'll bet. I got a phone call the day after I met with the Ellsworths and see Cliff telling me to lay off the case. Looking back on it, that call could have only been placed by Roger Ellsworth. So, despite all the boo-hoo tears, Looks like he was in on it from the beginning. Then, me poking around, they probably got nightmares. And at some point, the missus no longer trusted hubby and decided she'd be better off without him. Huh. No honor among killers. Somehow, she lured him down to that place on Powell, and she gave him some lead poisoning too planning to inherit the whole caboodle herself. And to be sure she was safe, I was next in her sights. But I don't get why Ellsworth paid you to look into something he'd want to keep. Hush, hush. Well, it looked suspicious if he refused help finding his brother's killer. And... I don't think he planned on me living long enough to figure out the scheme or cash that check. Then he cashed out first, thanks to his wife, who saved me some trouble. Trouble? If she hadn't killed him, I was going to. What? While I was waiting for you to get here, the phone rang. It was Uncle Charlie at the chase room. Roger Ellsworth's check bounced like a brand new book for. <laughs> What's so funny, Mallard? Listen in again to the adventures of Candy Madsen, Girls Doctor. <laughs> Thank you.